So, uh, what I'm going to talk about is an attempt at a new take on the demarcation uh, issue. And though agreeing fully that the demarcation issue is uh, highly relevant and more important now than it was a couple of decades ago, uh, I think that the previous attempts at uh, <coughs> defining the demarcation of science had some, had some problems, uh, so I'll begin by mentioning some such problems and then after that say in what direction I think we should go. I think that uh, the demarcation problem has often been approached uh, on the wrong level, uh, that is that people have tried to give exact methodological demarcations, although science doesn't have a stable methodology. What makes science so great is its ability to self improve, and that is also radical self improvement, which you want to do. I'll come back to that. The second problem is that I think most of the demarcation discussion, in fact, most of it has confused or not paid enough attention to the distinction between, on one hand, the demarcation of science, what is science, and on the other hand, the demarcation between science and pseudoscience. Because not everything that is not science is pseudoscience, and not everything that is confused with science is pseudoscience. In addition, we have the issues of distinguishing between good and bad science, uh, and I would claim that the distinction between good and bad science is quite different from the distinction between science as a whole. Uh, so, I think that the best way to approach this is to define science prior to trying to demarcate it against pseudoscience. Science is, uh, we couldn't have a concept of pseudoscience without having a concept of science.
tiny uh, size in this broad sense. Um, and that is very important when we look at the pseudoscience because uh, there are many, uh, shall we say, pseudo-humanities, or what people call pseudosciences, but which don't really try to describe themselves as scientists in the uh, traditional sense of the term. For instance, Holocaust deniers, people who put forward ancient astronaut theorists, the fabricators of Atlantis myths, the synodologists, people who uh, investigate, who claim to investigate the Shroud of Turin. In many cases of so called biblical archaeology, French theories on Shakespearean authorship, the Bible code, etc., etc. There are so many cases of this, uh, I don't think it would make very much sense to introduce a new term and say these are huge humanities. Because if you start looking at them and see what is it that distinguishes them from legitimate historical science, you will see that it's very much the same uh, problem with them as with, uh, for instance, creationism, when it, you think, when it uh, deviates from, from my knowledge. So I think that's the, the uh, broader, somewhat broader term. Uh, and, and then I think that it's important to distinguish between different criteria of um, quality in science. We can talk about the reliability of scientific statements and we can also talk about the scientific proof. So sometimes you can do, can do something that is very reliable, that you think is very correct and very reliable. But it doesn't mean very much to science <coughs> because it confirms something that was already known before. Or because it's rather uninteresting, doesn't contribute to our understanding of that which we have studied. Uh, and that is a distinction between science that is good or bad or better or worse. I, I don't think that has at all to do with the distinction between science and human science. Uh, I think that the distinction between science and human science is, uh, should, should focus only on reliability. If, the, if something is reliable so that it's correct, even if it's more or less meaningful, like counting the number of trees in a certain forest, but we do it very exactly, but there is no need for technology. Well, if it's ju just uninteresting, that doesn't there must be something more. Uh, but so this means that one very important criteria of pseudoscience is that pseudoscience is unreliable. And I think that is a necessary criteria of pseudoscience. Uh, but not all cases of low reliability. Suppose that someone tries honestly but fails to provide reliable results. A chemist is working day and night in the lab but fails to perform the analysis that he or she tried to perform so that the result is of no value and other chemists can remove for it. If that's what all that, that there is to say about it, well then very bad science perhaps, but it's still not pseudo science. Or even more interestingly, consider cases of fraud in science. If we take pseudo science as something which is falsely uh, described as science, that comes more or less with the term, then one would think that, well, then fraud in science, where people claim that they have done something in the lab and they haven't. Uh, that should be a very clear case of human science. But if you look at the literature, people distinguish between these so that fraud and science is almost never called human science. So what is the difference? Well,
Well, in my view, the, there is a major element, missing element, in the cases of honest but failed attempts and of fraud. And the missing element is a Gideon doctrine. So that pseudoscience is characteristically uh, something that has a Gideon doctrine. Uh, a doctrine that uh, uh, is not, uh, that does not uh, fulfill the requirements of, of science. So that would then be a sort of uh, definition of pseudo science, that one could define pseudo science in terms of it being unreliable. And that it has a uh, deviant uh, doctrine. Uh, but let's have a look at what more exactly does this deviant doctrine mean. Uh, we would normally say that someone claims that something is science and it is not science, and they have this deviant doctrine, and, and okay, then that is pseudo science. But there is one very interesting case which shows that this is not quite what it's about. And that is the case of people in what we traditionally think of as typical pseudosciences who don't claim that what they are doing is science. We have astrologers who say that uh, science is not good. Science doesn't provide any reliable knowledge. Astrology provides reliable knowledge. That's why you should look for it. Or you can, you have some, a whole lot of things to say that they are doing the real medical science. And then you have other whole lot of things who say that, well, um, medical science is very good. Scientists are wrong most of the time. Uh, so what we should do then is to do more wrong things instead because it's, uh, it's more reliable. Uh, and would that then not be super science? Because I don't claim that it's science. Uh, if you look at the um, literature on super science written by people who are trying to expose it, you will find that typically these are called, uh, the, the, these people are called super scientists, although they don't claim to be scientists. Is that unfair? Well, I, I don't think really it is if we go for an epistemically coherent uh, definition of science, like the one I, I uh, mentioned before, named it as, produced as that which provides us with the most reliable knowledge in different areas. Because if we look at, the, look at it like that, well then, pseudoscience is not necessarily uh, characterized by someone saying, I am doing science. It is, so, it is sufficient that they are saying, I am providing the most reliable knowledge in this area. Uh, so, and then the reason why it can still be called science is that we use the term, and the term science to know the most reliable knowledge in uh, that's very briefly how I uh, would like to define, define the pseudo science. Uh, there is one characteristic of it that you might think of as um, a disadvantage, namely that it is not very precise in the sense of being capable of determining in individual cases what is pseudo science. Because traditionally we would think of uh, a definition of pseudoscience as something that we can then directly apply without further ado, so that we can, for instance, apply uh, the criterion of uh, falsifiability, and then we can determine whether something is falsifiable or not, and from that we can determine whether it is uh, science or not. Whereas if I say that reliability is here and then we have the additional work to people finding out uh, what is the most reliable knowledge that we have. But I think we in fact have a choice. We have a 
choice between a timeless and general definition of theory of science and one which is methodologically precise. And I don't, because I don't think we have both. And the reason for that is very simple. And I mentioned at the beginning, it has to do with the fact that science uh, does change radically and that is made to strengthen its ability of radical self-improvement. A self-improvement self that can be so radical that it reaches to the, not only methods but also rather basic methodologies, uh, principles for what we consider to be an acceptable explanation or not an acceptable explanation. A couple of hundred years ago, it was self-evident that uh, uh, divine uh, influence could be a reasonable explanation. Now that is excluded from science, but then uh, random phenomena were not to say that something was random was not was not taken to be an explanation. Today, we use randomness as something that explains a phenomenon like in some dynamics. And these are very fundamental changes. Uh, and if we want to have a definition of science or a, or a clarification of the distinction between science and pseudoscience that uh, goes to that level of explaining what is a good methodology and what is not a good methodology, uh, if we want to have something like that, then we have to accept that definition cannot uh, be timeless because things change over time. And we we'll probably also have to, to accept that what is very relevant for one discipline is not all that's relevant for another discipline. So if you want to have a definition that is relatively stable over time and for, uh, across disciplines, then I think we will have to have a definition that does not uh, specify the so, based on that, I would say that we have the choice between uh, a very general definition like the one I mentioned and one that is more specific, and the specific one we will then have to accept that it is uh, something that can change just as much as uh, science can change. I'm not claiming that we only need one of these two types of definitions. I still think that we a lot of work on the criteria of scientific